Another major upset at Bramall Lane. First Division Sheffield United now under the rejuvenated Howard Kendall confirming their revival by dumping Arsenal out of the cup. One goal enough, the recalled Carl Wiertz throwing himself at Dane Whitehouse's cross on 68 minutes. A major blow to Arsenal's season. Aston Villa will travel to meet the Blades in round four with caution. Everton were pushed hard first time by Stockport and even harder in the replay. Stockport powerful in the air in front on 22 minutes. Mike Flynn's long throw headed home by Matthew Bound. That lead held for 49 minutes until Duncan Ferguson recalled in place of last year's Wembley hero Paul Rideout leapt ahead Graham Stewart's corner past Neil Edwards. Two minutes later, Everton were in front. Andre Kanchelska's shot not held by Edwards. Graham Stewart prodded home his tenth of the season. But just as in the first game, Stockport recovered to level at 2-2. Alan Armstrong turning in the box and sensationally levelling once more. Extra time looked certain, but with just a minute left in normal time, Stockport retreated as John Ebrill went forward and Ebrill took the opportunity to far what he called the best and most important goal of his life. Everton's big name stars produced it when it was most needed, but an agonising defeat for Stockport, who played consistently well over two legs. Another major cup night in the North East, this time at Roker Park, as Manchester United went to Sunderland, a first division side on a roll under the management of Peter Reid. Commentary is by Peter Brackley. Here's Smith. It's a useful wall in as well. Bruce with a header out, only as far as Michael Gray. Agnew's touch, it goes Bill Gray! United are attacking, but there's no real edge to their finishing at the moment. And then Scholes, just as I speak, tucks it into the corner. The substitution has paid off. Sharp will take this corner kick. Captain R. A hasty clearance. But United are still pressing. Sharp with a cross. And it's there from Cole. A superb header right into the corner from Andy Cole. Spurs had found the going uncomfortable away to Hereford, but back at White Hart Lane, they cruised home. Teddy Sheringham starting the goal rush on 23 minutes from Ronnie Rosenthal's cross. Seven minutes later, Chris Armstrong headed home number two from Darren Kasky's far post corner. Into the second half, and Spurs ruthlessly pressed home their superiority. Chris McKenzie fumbled a shot by Rule Fox, and that allowed Sheringham to make it three. Just before the hour mark, Sheringham's forward partner Armstrong grabbed his second, again with his head, again supplied by Kasky. Armstrong and Sheringham are forming a partnership that threatens to rival some of the greats of Spurs history, and Sheringham completed his hat-trick on the night in the 80th minute to take his tally for the season to 20. Hereford didn't leave empty-handed. In the final minute, Gareth Stoker's shot bounced off the crossbar and over the line off Ian Walker's head, but Division Three interest in the FA Cup extinguished by a Spurs side as ruthless in the Cup as they'd become in the Premier League. After managing just 16 goals in their previous 26 outings, Manchester City found their goal touch with a vengeance against Leicester. Jorge Tinkladze the main inspiration. His early free kick found Uwe Rossler diving in at the near post. Nine minutes later, it was Tinkladze himself. A superb solo run from inside his own half and a finish past Kevin Poole from the edge of the box to leave Manchester City well in control. 
Into the second half and the third goal, Gary Flitcroft hit by Kinkladze. Flitcroft shot, then blocked by Poole for Niall Quinn to net the rebound. The Georgian Kinkadze laid on the fourth on 55 minutes for Steve Lomas to hammer home from the edge of the box. And Kinkadze rounded off a superb individual performance with a diagonal pass for the substitute Jerry Craney to score off a post. Manchester City's biggest win of the season, Leicester with just one win in 11 starts. Just as in their first meeting, Nottingham Forest made hard work of it against Stoke City, despite the early lead gained on 16 minutes. Scott Gemmell and Ian Wohn creating the opportunity for Kevin Campbell to spin and toe poke the ball into the roof of the net. Steve Stone's powerful running was one of the few clear differences between these sides. Ten minutes after half-time, Stone taken down in the box as Lee Sanford struggled to contain him. That gave Stuart Pearce the chance to prove his reliability from the spot. His second goal over the course of this tie, enough to shake off a Stoke side who were surprising opponents in league and cup. Without a home win in more than four months, Wimbledon didn't have much to spare against Watford. The late introduction of Andy Clark swung it. Alan Kimball's corner knocked down by FN Kuku for Clark to put the Dons in front with just 12 minutes remaining in a hard-fought tie, which was long on effort but short on chances either way. Twenty-eight thousand watched the second instalment of the West Midlands Derby at Molyneux as Wolves at last won a game for their new boss Mark McGee. Darren Ferguson, relishing an extended run back in the first team, sent the home fans into raptures on 17 minutes. The lead held until five minutes into the second half when Jonathan Hunt pulled Birmingham level. But Wolves fans had the storybook ending they craved as their hometown hero Steve Bull put them back in front on 50 minutes. Yet even when the home team were reduced to 10 men, with Brian Law sent off for a deliberate handball on the line, Birmingham were to find no way back. Hunt stepped forward to take the penalty. Mike Stowell blocked it to consign promotion contenders Birmingham to their second major defeat in a week and give Wolves hope of a good cup run after a dismal first half of the season. So Just when Blackburn thought their championship hangover was behind them, their miserable season took a turn for the worse against First Division Ipswich. Level in 90 minutes, but deep in extra time, Ipswich breaking through. Neil Gregory teeing the chance up for Paul Mason. Blackburn beaten in a home third round replay for the third year running and Ipswich extending their unbeaten run to 11. And pointed to a recent array record in the last five matches away they've drawn at Manchester United, drawn at Arsenal, won at Manchester City and Queen's Park Rangers and drawn at Everton and if anybody could come up with a tactical arrangement to worry Newcastle it's surely Glenn Hoddle. The wear and tear of one big game after another is evident on Newcastle's playing resources right now. A dressing room full of bumps, bruises and strains. Steve Howey had a fitness test today on a hamstring strain that forced him to miss the win at Coventry. He's ruled out again though. Les Ferdinand and Robert Lee have both been testing injured Achilles tendons with mixed results. Ferdinand does start, but Lee is missing to be replaced by Paul Kitson. David Ginola and Philippe Albert have both also been showing signs of wear and tear but both pull on the shirt again tonight. Chelsea have fewer problems, but an important change of personnel from the first game for them as Kevin Hitchcock starts in goal. Dimitri Karin, who sadly shouldered the blame for Newcastle's late equaliser at the bridge, is out with a groin strain. Hitchcock played his first game of the season at Everton and starts between the sticks again here. Ruud Hullet missed the first tie, but he passed a fitness test and plays here, probably in the middle of midfield, or at least that'll be his starting position, with Chelsea's youngsters doing so well at the back in his absence. Mark Hughes plays tonight up the front, but this...
or however well he and his team do here will be his last game for a while and he'll miss the next round should Chelsea reach it because of suspension after he was sent off at Goodison incidentally he is appealing against that suspend of that uh, sending off with Dennis Wise and their intention signal right from the off as they go forward vital you feel for Chelsea not to concede early here our match referee is Stephen Lodge from Barnsley early touch of the ball for Kevin Hitchcock to settle him down trying to pick out Hughes and Albert went with him and climbed on him and Chelsea have the first free kick Albert reverting to a central defensive position in the absence of Steve Howie now Dennis Wise has the capability of picking men out with delicacy in the box see what he can do here he went all the way to the back post for Hughes and Srenicek appeared to be in command of the situation kept a clean sheet which was vital at the weekend but wise is one man with the finesse on the dead ball from corner and free kick positions now it's enough and the crowd roars with the ball gets to him they want to see some individual trickery they didn't get much Chelsea stood their ground well wise and it's a good ball to Hughes must go left Terry Phelan and Spencer John Spencer not good enough from Spencer Wise has it back great ball from Dennis Wise to Petrescu danger here and it had to stick and it did Sonicic made an important save and Chelsea were just looking to pick up the pieces had it come back from the keeper now it's Ferdinand can Newcastle hit them on the break almost was the answer I'm not sure that Kevin Hitchcock was getting anywhere near this. Gina into Ferdinand, only one thought in his mind. A magnificent bend on it. Surely another tweak and a bit more spin, and it was bound to go in. Into Kitson. Shielded it well for Beardsley. Beresford's making the run. Can he get on the end of it? It'll be electric pace if he could, and John Beresford is quick. Not quite that quick. Stadium now, St James's Park. It's like a citadel in the middle of Newcastle. Ginola. Another excellent tackle by Dubery. Hughes the layoff for Phelan. Wise has gone left outside him. They allow Terry Phelan to go a long way. Here is Dennis Wise. Bullet found space for himself. Hughes fell into the path of Spencer. And an important save from Pavel Srenicek. And I don't really feel as though John Spencer really got hold of this. Rather scuffed it downward, and it was probably drifting wide of Srenicek's post anyway. Then we should probably know better than to expect home teams, even starting as favourites like Newcastle here tonight, to have it easy in the FA Cup. Was there a handball by Hughes? Yes, there was. And even if we don't have recourse to the record books, Ferdinand. Tied in with two, Myers and Dubry. No foul. We only need to look back 24 hours to see one of the big teams in the country, Blackburn Rovers, knocked out on home by Ipswich. Brilliant ball from Hullet to Phelan, who seemed clearly to be impeded. And Stephen Lodge lets it go. It was a fantastic pass again from Hullet. Now Watson. Good well to shake off Myers, and Myers eventually seemed to tag him back, and Hullet's complaining about the previous non-decision. His pass released Phelan into a dangerous area. 
Instead, Newcastle have a free kick in a dangerous area. How quickly things can turn in this game. Are Newcastle about to open the scoring here? No. And now Peacock is penalised. And I believe about to be booked. And I have to say, it doesn't make very sensible reading. Booked for dissent probably rather than the offence. But it seemed no more than a brush off on Spencer, who's the smallest player on the field, remember. And Peacock's probably one of the biggest, certainly one of the biggest. And yet, when Newcastle were hopelessly stretched just moments before at the back, Warren Barton seemed quite clearly to pull back Terry Freeman, and there was no decision given. Now Hughes tangles with Peacock, and Hughes is penalised. Make of it all what you will. Ferdinand has it. There's a bit of space this time for Les Ferdinand. He went to ground, Lee was the challenging player. And David Lee is certain to receive the punishment of referee Stephen Lodge and Chelsea Hope against hope that it's going to be yellow. Ferdinand almost seemed to have gone away from Lee, but his dive to the ground from the foul by Lee gives Newcastle this very threatening position. The temperature is rising in this cup tie. The drama is intensifying, and the debating points are multiplying. in the wall, Genoa, Albert, who is it to be? Mark wants from 10, it's Albert, deflection and home. Newcastle United have a lead they scarcely deserve here, but they'll take it any way they can get it. Three minutes before the break, the breakthrough comes, and it's off the shins of Dennis Wise, I do believe, in the wall. He's a powerful striker of the ball with the left foot. And Hitchcock had absolutely no chance. And probably Hughes would be the first to criticise himself. Ferdinand. Was there a handball by Phelan? The referee let it go. Now Hullet. Arguably the game's outstanding player so far. Newton read it well. So did Barton for Newcastle. Now, are we going to see Newcastle United building up ahead of steam here in the second half? Ferdinand so strong on Myers, just brushed him aside. Brilliant from Beardsley. Gino La. Oh, wasn't missing by much. With Hitchcock at full stretch. Only one thought in Gino La's mind here. Beardsley was brave enough to go to ground, but that was the best way of making sure it went wide to Gino La. Magical strike on the right foot. Missed not by very much. That was the bravery of Beardsley. Very close. Kitson nicked it ahead of Hullet. Clark did well for Newcastle. Kitson to Ferdinand. One on one less Ferdinand. Myers was the defender there. Now Lee was booked for bringing Ferdinand down at the end of the first half. Newcastle got a goal from it. Andy Myers just trying to make himself first ahead of Ferdinand, but Ferdinand is almost irresistibly strong. And Myers takes his punishment from referee Lodge into a yellow card. But Newcastle have another threatening free kick position. Albert hit the first one. It went off the shins of Wise and into the net. Now, will Chelsea leave a spare man on the side of the wall? Yes, they have again, just as before. There were four in the wall, and Wise to the side. They're doing the same defensive lineup here again. And just as before, Lodge is going to wait until the wall goes the full ten. It's an indirect free kick this time, though. 
So somebody's going to have to touch it here before they can get a strike on. Oh, there it is. It hit Watson this time. Just shows you, doesn't it, the break of the ball. Could go either side. And this time the wall comes out on top. You have to feel for Dennis Wise, the unwitting party in that first half goal drama. Five minutes gone in this second half and an up-tempo beginning by Newcastle. It looks to me as though Les Ferdinand is struggling at the moment, but he's struggling badly. But the play went on and Chelsea very nearly went to sleep. And Andy Myers is another player struggling. Kitson got the wrong side of him here. Just couldn't keep Kitson out and Thankfully for Chelsea, it's a tremendous stop, really, by Hitchcock. Now, Myers needs treatment, and I've no doubt that Les Ferdinand's going to need treatment for Newcastle as well. I don't think Les Ferdinand looked very happy. Keegan and Holland, old... Associates, it will be Steve Clark to come straight on, you feel. Now, I wonder if it all relates to this incident here. Ferdinand and Dubry going for the ball. And I think, if anything, the damage to Ferdinand was done before that because he looked gingerly. Looked to be feeling his back as he came away from that collision. I think the damage was done before that But Keegan and McDermott. will be worried. Newcastle need Les Ferdinand, A1 fit. Steve Clark's on for Andy Myers. It's a defender for a defender, but Ferdinand stays on for Newcastle. And that's their good news, he may be able to run it off. Clark's an experienced player, Scottish international. Now, under the etiquette of the new rules, Ferdinand is now being sent back to the touchline. Furious appeals for a handball. Chelsea have got to clear this, and they haven't yet. Watson did well to dig it out on the football line, and he's offside. And now, we can only assume that Ferdinand will be let back into the action by Stephen Lodge. Yes, indeed. It's tough on Myers, who's had a good battle with Ferdinand tonight. Wise. Peacock won it back for Newcastle. Beresford. to Barton Lee Clark nice from Barton to Watson first real touch for Steve Clark it was important that he got something of it can he keep Watson out yes I think we'll put that down as a big chance spurned by Paul Kitson and he knows it it's deflected really off the shin of Clark here, and that really sets it up to deceive David Lee. But Kitson took up a great position between Dubry and Lee, has a clear side of goal, and Hitchcock can just watch it drifting by his post. Chinel along. Kitson on the end of it. You just feel that there are other goals in this game. But it is absolutely vital to the outcome here, surely, as to which team gets the next one. Is it to be Chelsea? It's Spencer. What has he given? A penalty. The FA Cup never fails to produce something dramatic.
and there may be more and worse to follow for Newcastle because if the man has been brought down in a goal scoring position the least it can be is a yellow card Darren Peacock's on a yellow it's a second yellow and he must go and has this cut tie turned has luck turned has fate taken a hand here Spencer's in one on one Peacock brings him down he was already on his way around Peacock and Darren Peacock who put himself truly in the line of fire there as he tends to do it's Dennis Wise and it's 1-1 Chelsea are level and in all honesty that is the least they deserve right on the hour mark the next chapter begins to unfold and we start again level It all seemed to be scripted against Chelsea until a couple of moments ago. Well, I mentioned before the old saying that things even themselves out over time. Now Keegan's the man with the problem. And suddenly this cut tie swings in favour of the visitors here. There were one or two good breakouts by Chelsea in the little period before the penalty and you felt there was something there for them. They've got it thanks to Dennis Wise's coolness from the spot and they've also got a man advantage now. Can they make it pay? Or will Newcastle rally and raise themselves with three at the back? Ginola, he's the man who can do it for them. Faced by Hullet. In towards Kitson. Gillard just about kept it. Chelsea went to sleep there. Kitson went down. It's another penalty. Would you believe it? Chelsea went to sleep here at the back and allowed the ball to be kept in play by Gillard. Kitson. Now, did he tumble or did Lee push him over? Lee has also also already been booked. There's no further punishment for Lee. And now Peter Beardsley has the chance to restore. Newcastle's lead. Beardsley. The day before his 35th birthday. Is this to be his 100th Newcastle goal? Yes. They were level for just three minutes. Newcastle back in front. a dagger deep into Chelsea's heart here. Brilliant work from Beardsley. Wise for Chelsea. Phelan. Great ball from Wise. Phelan once more. Pull it. Trinic check tested at the near post and not found wanting here. You still, I have to say, you still feel there are more goals in this cup tight. Even now, after the drama of the hour and that period of the game. We may expect more here. Great save from Srinicek. Vital one for Newcastle. Another yellow card.
Newton. Chelsea are laying siege to Newcastle's goal now. Phelan. Bilbrey's header wasn't good enough, but how important is this save from Spencer by Srinicek? Did so well there, the keeper. Spencer wide to Petrescu. Now Lee, who's joined in. Good effort. Oh, it came back off the palms of Srinicek and almost fell to Hughes. But Newcastle kept it and Albert's quality got them out of trouble. They tidied that up so well, Newcastle. Kitson did well too to hold on and get a free kick. Yet again they thank Pavel Srinicek, who is earning his corn here. Ginola. Here come the blue shirts yet again. Wise to Hullet. Good pace again from Hullet. It's not a bad one either. Hughes! Excellent save from Srinicek, perhaps the best of the lot. Did well to reach it, Mark Hughes. Fabulous cross from Hullet. And this looked to be creeping inside the near post. Great stretch from the keeper. Good ball from Wise, Srinicek, lost this one, penalised Hughes it was, who's furious. Srinicek gets a free kick. So the shot wouldn't have counted had it been lower. Inside the final 10 minutes, but this FA Cup story d still does not have a certain ending. Too long from Ginola. Lee. Too ambitious. Srinicek has really come into his own here since Newcastle went down to 10 men. Arthur Cox looks at his watch. There's still a long way to go. Keegan says keep going. They're there. They're getting there. They're in front, but they're not yet in round four. Good ball from John Beresford to Kitson. Got him behind the last man. Lee was in the right place and did it well. This could have been curtains for Chelsea. Very coolly done by Lee. Defeat would be a bitter and a huge blow for Chelsea's season. Phelan. Spencer. Petrescu. Is there another goal in this game? Wise. Phelan. Deflected. But Newcastle hold out again. Glenn Hoddle's thinking about... Gavin Peacock maybe to replace John Spencer wise Spencer good ball Newbury oh brilliantly cleared by Albert it may have been drifting wide anyway Spencer. Still they wait. Is this the moment? Holland, yes! For Chelsea! And you always felt it was possible. And now, truly, 
the lock has evened itself out. Newcastle down to 10 men. I've got to do it all again. Late in the piece, and arguably the game's outstanding player with a minute to go. Well won by Dubery above Watson, and Hullet only needed one touch. Phelan. Hughes. Newton. So many tired sets of legs out there now. And you'd have to say that it would be much more likely to be a mistake rather than a flash of inspiration at this stage, but you never know. And Petrescu can strike a dead ball well, so can Dennis Wise. Who's it to be for Chelsea? It's Wise. It wasn't missing by much. Yet another top draw save from Srinicek. Beautiful bend on this two from Wise over the top of the wall and Srinicek did so well. Peacock did well for Chelsea. Pullet couldn't get off the ground. Feel it. He's really earned his corn tonight, this keeper. Peacock for Chelsea. That could be got to him. Feel it. Was there a handball off Watson? Referee let it go. Mark Hughes. Yet again, certainly Jack makes the difference. Powered through the first challenge and the instant shot from Hughes. Concentration for the defenders is of paramount importance in the time remaining here. Nobody wants to be the player to make the crucial mistake. Well won by Peacock for Chelsea. Wise dug it out to Hullet. Newcastle United are basically playing 4-4-1 at the moment. Phelan. But can Chelsea make them pay with the extra man advantage? Once more, Srinicek. Master of the situation. He will have done much tonight, Srinicek, you feel, to earn the approval of this home crowd here with Shaka Hislop available to Keegan once more. Beersley wide, Huckabee. Now, can Newcastle drag themselves forward to support? It's a good run from Huckabee. Beardsley. <laughs> Kevin Hitchcock has been much the Less busy of the two keepers the longer this cup tie has gone. Watson above Hullet. Fell to Robbie Elliott. Good ball from Elliott to Huckabee. The home crowd haven't seen much of him before tonight, but they're getting a good look at him here. This is Darren Huckabee. truly would have been the fairy tale story. In between Dubry and the other Chelsea central defenders, are we to see the late, late introduction here of Chris Holland, the one remaining substitute unused on either side? Then it'll be a full set of six. Chelsea. 
Surely now a goal would win it, either way. But the crossing hasn't been good enough in extra time for Chelsea. And this man... Stronacek. Yes, the anxious glances to the watchers now. Into the last minute. Stronacek perhaps keeping Newcastle in the FA Cup. But he's made yet have a star role himself and Kevin Hitchcock, the two keepers, should it go to penalties. Huckabee, could this be the moment for Newcastle? Warren Barton. Ha, tricking his way through Phelan. Chelsea build one more attack. The police are out at the peripheries of the pitch. Always a sign to players that time is running out. Ginola. Mustering one last charge forward, David Ginola. Well struck two and not missing by much. Well, we can hardly accuse the foreign stars flooding into the English game. The likes of Ginola here and Hullet of taking the easy options. It is to be penalties. After two hard-fought cup ties and 30 minutes of extra time, still nothing divides these teams. Kevin Keegan must get his penalty takers sorted out and breathe new optimism into his troops. At the end of extra time, Newcastle United held by Chelsea. The result, Newcastle 2, Chelsea 2. Is it to be Chelsea's night of glory, their best night of the season, or are they going to make a long and fruitless journey home? Whatever about the footballing justice of penalties, Nobody can argue with the drama. 2-2 Two -two at the end of extra time then. Peter Beardsley, a scorer from the penalty spot in the second half of normal time here tonight. First man up. Beardsley versus Hitchcock. Early advantage to Chelsea. Normally so reliable from the spot, Beardsley. Hitchcock not forced to save. Even the best are frail under this pressure. And Hitchcock goes away to the Chelsea contingent to try to rally them, the Chelsea support. Now it's David Lee to give Chelsea an early advantage. Lee against Srinicek. Chelsea in front, Lee. Srenicek stopped everything that Chelsea threw at him from the second half on, beaten by Lee. Steve Watson for Newcastle. More pressure on Watson now after the first missed penalty by Beardsley. Trouble for Newcastle in this now. Hitchcock gives Chelsea a clear advantage. It's not a good penalty from Steve Watson. And it is a good save from Hitchcock. He didn't even play in the first cup tie. Is he to beat Chelsea's hero now? Dennis Wise. Very reliable from the spot against Srinicek. Wise expertly done. Best penalty of the lot so far. No surprise, it's from Wise. Chelsea lead by two. It's beginning to look good for Chelsea.
There's still time for Newcastle, but time is running out. Surely, John Beresford has to get this to keep realistic hope alive. Beresford against Hitchcock. Straight through the dive of Hitchcock. Newcastle are on the score sheet in the shootout. Just powered it through him. On that trusty left foot. Gavin Teacock, former Newcastle player, now for Chelsea. Didn't feature much during the whole cut tie from the subs bench. Could make a telling contribution now, though. And he has. He did it so well. Chelsea lead 3-1. They are yet to miss a penalty. And David Ginola must score to keep Newcastle United in the FA Cup. He looked a tired, worn-out player, quite understandably so, during extra time. Stephen Lodge is going to halt the proceedings for a moment. And Gina La will try to compose himself. They're changing their minds, and it's Philippe Albert instead. So now Albert on that left foot. Has he the ice cool temperament for the occasion? You would think he does. But can he blast it past Hitchcock? Yes, brilliantly. Newcastle are still alive. St James's Park gets behind Newcastle and in particular behind Srinicek. Srinicek needs a save. If Eddie Newton slots the penalty, the cup tie is won. Can Srinicek keep Newcastle United in the FA Cup? Newton wins the cup tie for Chelsea. They win the shootout 4 2. Eddie Newton, the hard working midfield anchor man. As cool as you like. What a story at St James's Park tonight. And Glenn Hoddle's tactical mastery over the two legs somehow ends up being rewarded by the perverse logic of the penalty shootout. The glum Newcastle faces will tell the whole story. But only joy for Chelsea. Well, Newcastle United lived on the edge, you felt, through this entire cup tie. Chelsea felt they were robbed in the first meeting at Stamford Bridge. A different goalkeeper tonight and a different story. Tactically excellent and well prepared here. And even when behind during normal time, you felt that they had the game's outstanding player in Ruud Hullet and they had the system to undo Newcastle. We can't call it Newcastle's first defeat at home this season. But Newcastle are out of the FA Cup on penalties. Chelsea feel justice has prevailed and they win a trip to Queen's Park Rangers and a local derby in the fourth round. Newcastle left to concentrate on the league.